what great news we have today. First, I want to welcome several people we have with us today, and I won't quite get everybody named, but we have lots of good folks here who are either have been working on this or will be. Our public safety representative, representatives, I especially want to uh, welcome Public Safety Commissioner Ken Armstrong, who's with us today, Police Chief Lawrence Weathers, and from FIRE, Assistant Chief Mike Gosper, and do we have Major Sauce here? Major Sauce? Major Jordan Sauce may show up. Our friends from Jessamine County, Judge Executive David West is here with us, and Chris Bowman, Director of 911 in Jessamine County. Russ Clark, 911 Director for Bluegrass 911, which serves Garrett and Lincoln Counties. And Virginia Moore, Executive Director of the Kentucky Commission on the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. And welcome to Beth Cross, who's here signing for us today. Thank you all for being here. Today we're announcing a new regional initiative to bring text to 911 to Lexington and several central Kentucky counties. The service is available now. This is a huge step forward in public safety. People can now send text messages to local 911 call centers in Fayette, Jessamine, Garrett, and Lincoln counties. And 911 operators in those counties will be able to send a text to a 911 caller, for example, to check on his condition or her location. This change is so important to those who are nonverbal, hard of hearing, deaf, or speech impaired. And Virginia Moore is going to talk more about that in just a minute. A text might be critically important in a dangerous situation. It's not hard to imagine a domestic violence victim whose only safe option is a text. This improvement makes all of us safer. And I want to thank Robert Stack and our friends in other counties and everyone who has worked hard to make this happen. Now, first, let's hear from David West, County Judge Executive in Jessamine County. Welcome, David. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, it, it is truly an honor to be here. It's very rare that we get to make this type of announcement. This is an initiative that will serve every single citizen. Everybody, without exception, can use this service. So this is exciting. We want to make sure that uh, everyone knows that this is the first step in this evolution. And it is important for people to know what text to 911 is, and it's important that people know what text to 911 is not. For example, right now, videos and photos are not accepted by this service. As Mayor said, there are many instances that this could be useful for the deaf and the hard of hearing for a domestic violence case, and there are numerous other instances this could be used. But our 911 providers, as I'm sure that they will, they will tell you later, still would prefer a voice call where there can be interaction between the operator and the uh, caller so that more information can be gathered. But a great service, the great first step in uh, more communications. The 27 corridor is heavily used, and Fayette, Jessman, Garrett, and Lincoln are in this collaborative effort to, to initialize this service. And they can transfer calls from one county to another, which is extremely important. And I'd like to applaud the, uh, the directors of those services that have worked so hard in making this happen. Uh, there are 22 trillion texts per year. I believe that's correct. And so texting is a part of our way of life. And now it's part of our emergency services. 
I couldn't be prouder of the work that's been done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judge West. This is a wonderful regional partnership. We talk about that a lot, and I thank you so much. Now, let's hear from Virginia Moore. Virginia is the executive director of the Kentucky Commission on the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. And Virginia, I know that this change will be really, really important to the members of this community. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor, Judge Exep, Robert, and this beautiful facility for 911. There are 700,000 plus deaf and hard of hearing in the Commonwealth, in the state of Kentucky. And that number is growing because hearing loss is the third health risk behind arthritis and heart attacks. So we're, we are a population that is growing to have a hearing loss. You, everybody here knows someone who has a hearing loss. And in an emergency, that becomes even worse for you. You become nervous, your hearing is the first thing that goes. I am so happy to be a part of this and for this beautiful facility to serve the three counties that we've been talking about just here in Fayette County. There's 47,000 deaf and hard of hearing here in Fayette County. We have a gentleman here, Cole Zuloff, that needed this service just three months ago and had to wait approximately five to six hours before he could get his son to help him because he had no way to call 911. Now with text to 911, he's going to have that opportunity and he can get help right away. So for the deaf and hard of hearing community, we all thank you for your work here and we applaud the, your efforts and we're looking forward to the rest of the 911 centers rolling this capability out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Virginia. Um, at this time, finally, I'd like to ask Robert Stack, the director of our division of 911, to come forward and say a few words. He has really helped coordinate and he's made this happen. So welcome and thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. I, along with Chris Bowman, director of Jessamine County uh, 911 and Russ Clark, director of Bluegrass 911 serving Garrett and Lincoln counties are very pleased to reach this milestone for 911 operations, which is part of our mission to provide the best 911 service possible to our communities. Text to 911 is now available as a means of reaching 911 in an emergency. Now, text to 911 refers to the ability to send text messages to local 911 call centers during their, an emergency. The public should use text to 911 when a call, voice call is not possible. The rule of thumb is this, call if you can, text if you must. We really want to get the voice call, but there are, we understand there are times when a voice call isn't possible. This service will be useful to those who are nonverbal, hard of hearing, deaf, and speech impaired. Some other examples include uh, the caller is facing a threatening situation and a voice call would only increase the threat to them where they might still be able to text. Situations where the caller is injured or has a condition that limits their ability to speak. And I can speak to this personally. My mother had a stroke a few years ago in another city and called 911 repeatedly and they had no idea uh, exactly where she was because she was on a wireless phone. She was away from her home and uh, she could not get help in the city she was at here in Kentucky because they could not find her and did, she was unable to speak. Other situations are uh, the autism community. There are certain uh, young people and adults in the autism spectrum that are nonverbal but are able to use technology. This will benefit that community as well. Also, we have some remote locations in Fayette County, such as Raven Run, where getting a cellular signal out can be difficult, but a text message will go. Phone lines and cell phone towers, as you're all aware, do get overwhelmed during the holidays, uh, during traffic congestion, around shopping facilities and at sporting events and activities downtown. 
When that occurs and you can't get a cell signal, you're more likely to be able to get a text message out, and this is going to be a great benefit to the entire community when that occurs. The only thing you have to put in the two line for a uh, text to 911 is the numerals 911. No other information needs to go in that line, and it will get to our centers. If somebody is on the periphery of a county or service area, they may get a message saying that text to 911 is not supported in one of the neighboring counties. You know today that counties that are providing here locally, but if they happen to be, say, on the border of uh, Madison County, they may not be able to get the service. The very first message you send to 911 should contain two important pieces of information. It needs to identify the location where the emergency is at and what the emergency is. When we have those two pieces of information, we can start first responders. All the additional information we get from the uh, texter is really just helpful, but those two pieces of information at the very beginning, location and the emergency description, is the most important. We want to discourage uh, a lot of the younger generation particularly likes emojis, they like uh, abbreviations, they like acronyms, and all sorts of things like that. We want to discourage that. Plain language, that's all we need so that we can act quickly to respond to this message. Right now, text to 911 does not support pictures and video. Uh, Judge Executive West mentioned that a minute ago. That is on the horizon for 911 nationally, but it's in beta right now, it's being tested, and it's not ready uh, for prime time yet. We will get to that point sometime in the future. Right now, it's just the written message. We have a packet that we distributed, and if you didn't get one, see me after the press conference. We'd like to give you a lot of details about the proper use of text to 911, and your packet also contains some other information about smart 911, and a lot of this information is also going to be on Lexington uh, 911's website this morning, so if you didn't get a packet uh, or we run out of packets, I'll be happy to get one to you, but you can also find that on our website as well.